can call me Joker. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Blah, blah, blah. All of that chit chat's gonna get you hurt. There have been many Jokers, but never one like this. Joaquin Phoenix stars as Arthur Fleck, a sad, lonely man with his share of struggles. He lives with his mother in a rundown apartment, works as a clown, and has a condition that forces him to laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> No joy in that sound. Arthur struggles with that and with mental illness, while his mother tries to keep him positive. My mother always tells me to smile and put on a happy face. She told me I had a purpose. To bring laughter and joy to the world. But it's hard to smile when you can't even get laughs as a clown. The one escape Arthur enjoys is the nightly Murray Franklin show. Robert De Niro stars as something like the Johnny Carson of Gotham City. One night, Arthur, who's an aspiring comedian, gets featured, but not the way he intended. And finally, in a world where everyone thinks they could do my job, check out this guy. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. After that, Arthur snaps, and what begins as an act of self-defense gives the city a deranged new champion. For my whole life, I didn't know if I even really existed. But I do. And people are starting to notice. Now, out in the real world, police have also noticed the Joker. Although there's no confirmed credible threat, there is an increased security presence at some screenings. Why? Well, some critics have connected the Joker's rise to power with the incel movement. Online groups of so-called involuntary celibates, their forums are a swamp of hate, frustration, and misogyny, which can lead to violence. And yes, part of what puts Arthur on his path is this obsession over a neighbor played by Zazie Beetz. The problem is the film hides some of Arthur's behavior behind his smokescreen of mental illness. Regardless, it's easy to see how a film about a frustrated loner who turns to violence as disturbing in 2019. But The Joker is also a cautionary tale. This version of Gotham City set in 1981 is a cesspool. The city is suffering through a garbage strike. Frustrations between the rich and poor are at the boiling point, while social services are being cut, leaving people like Arthur kicked to the curb. And there, in front of his towers, talking about saving the city from clowns and chaos, is Thomas Wayne. Now, go back to the comic books or Tim Burton's Batman, and it was a vat of acid that made the comedian become the Joker. In this film, the toxic brew Arthur falls into is a cold, uncaring society that only looks up when he raises a gun. That's how monsters are born. Now, to be clear, this is not a good film. It's somewhat superficial, it's heavy-handed, it hammers the same tragic point again and again. Director Todd Phillips, who used to make cringe-worthy comedies like The Hangover, has stumbled into a film of toxic timeliness with this love letter to the character studies of the 70s, like Taxi Driver or French Connection, and the rest. A and he doesn't so much as wear his influences on his sleeve, he's practically reenacting them, but in the middle of this muddle is a remarkable performance by Joaquin Phoenix. There's a moment when he crystallizes into the character, we see it coming, but it arrives with this monstrous sort of grace. Send in the clouds. Phoenix doing this demonic dance, intoxicated by his own power. And then there he is, the one we were waiting for, blood on his face, the crowd bellowing for more. Disturbing? Yeah. It's also incredibly potent. Three and a half stars out of five. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto.